Strangers in the Wood is an actual play series drawing elements from gothic fairy tales and 80s fantasy and sci-fi action and horror films. As such, a list of content warnings will always be made available in the description. Everybody and welcome to another episode of Strangers in the Wood. I am your most treasured and loving game master, future thirty under thirty media luminary, <laughs> Kendrick Smith. <laughs> or if you prefer, wow. you can call me Kendo. Yeah, I'm calling it. All right. <laughs> We're gonna play this clip. In <laughs> three and a half years or less, <laughs> and uh, and point it out. Um, there you go. And if we don't, we'll just go back and cut that part out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back three and a half years, <laughs> get rid yeah. of that part only. Uh, yeah, that's my new this thing. episode. <laughs> yeah. that's my new thing where i uh i want to be a 30 under 30 because why not you know uh so yeah. let's try to make that happen by blowing up this co- uh, podcast you can find me on all social media at kendo makes films and you can find this podcast on twitter and instagram at tales yet told and with me today as always are my most awesome of players gus Hi, I am a uh, future Grammy Award winner, um, f- f- future um, emperor of the... I like the synergy that we're going in with. <laughs> e- emperor of the north. Oh. Nice. Nor- the, the northern kingdoms. The northern mm-hmm. colonies. Yeah. Um, Very nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Gus. That's, that's my name. <laughs> I don't need to bore you with all of my many titles, but uh, that's that's my name. Uh, uh, I I use he/him pronouns. I'm playing the I'm playing the weasel again. Walter back, the weasel boy. Back to the back to the boy. Back to the lab again. Whoa! <laughs> you guys, remember that Cartoon Network Dexter's Laboratory? Very nice. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Marcy. Hi. Um. I'm Marcy. Uh, future felon, uh, cruel tyrant, <laughs> ruling with an iron fist over the Southern Whoa. Isles. Oh, man. Uh, I should have given myself a title other than you know, 30. I was thinking too small. Yeah. You and Gus are going to like face off basically in the future then. Very much. Is this a future season idea? Oh, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll take this away. We'll take this away. Take that away, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to say anything else else about yourself, Marcy? Um, no. I think that speaks for itself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. fair enough. Fair enough. And last, but certainly not least, Hilda. Hi, I'm Hilda, future plebeian, uh, just trying to make it by in the world, <laughs> living a normal life with my normal ways. <laughs> In my normal job. Now, now do you <laughs> the normal are you name? A, are you a peasant in in the in the uh, empire of the northern kingdoms or the southern isles? I'm Hilda? a peasant or the eastern in, something. The eastern I'm a peasant plateaus. in whichever country doesn't get me killed. Uh, that's neither of them. So is sorry. That, yeah, this season was sponsored by George R. R. Over Martin. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I reestablished Switzerland, and I just live there. 
Hell yeah. Mm, yeah. Nice. The queen of Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, well, we're going to have to figure out how to make this a season. Uh, I, I just imagine, like... <laughs> A massive empire, like on either side, and there's like a tiny <laughs> little cabin, like in between their bodies. That's, me. That's me. That's where I'm gonna be. Just, just, Love just that. working the nine to five. All right, I think it's time for the recap. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought that this place wants you as well? I don't want this place. It's scary and weird and it's doing this to me why would i ever want a place like this what are you doing here well we uh came looking for you just you Got, um and like i think that's when walter realizes that dorothy doesn't recognize dakota hi dorothy who, who are you dorothy this is um this is dakota that's not my sister. Hearing that, Dakota, like, skin crawls. You're right. I'm not your sister. In front of you all's eyes, Dakota reverts. Oh, shit. It's, it's almost as if all of their fears and anxieties and self-hatred have manifested into a single point in their body and I'm returning it once. Mm -hmm. How do I get it back? You need to vow to a mission. I got one for you. There's someone here who shouldn't be here. Find them and make them not a problem anymore. The case uh, says, looking at the way things could have been and the way things are, the first step to a better life. And there's just a, a sticky note on top of it that has like handwritten Dorothy on it. Well, I guess it can't hurt. Uh, and she goes ahead and turns back to the TV and slides the tape into the slot. Uh, yeah, so you walk into that room and I've kind of described it before, but it is uh, about like a medium sized room, not terribly large uh, with uh, fold out tables. Like I, I want to say about like three of them in a row. And then like along the edge of the room are other fold out tables that have just assortments of brunch food, essentially, and like uh, paper cups and, and like lemonade or something. And... Uh, uh, a bunch of people are, you know, sitting down having breakfast. I think some of them have probably been distracted by their meal, like seeing like the four of you all up, especially since Sister May came down and uh, we're like not trying to. I mean, some of them were trying to eavesdrop, but like some of them weren't trying to. But it's like you guys are kind of right there. <laughs> um, right there. I mean, a little loud. Yeah, exactly. So things are kind of falling back into the kind of cycle of things. Um now that you know you all's conversation is done there's maybe a little bit of gossip you know some people like kind of looking over their shoulders at you um but other than that you know okay um i would say that dakota probably just walks over and fills a plate with like hash browns and sausage um are they like scrambled eggs or are they like actually like over easy which do you want oh come on you gotta get the runny yolk okay there you go that's what you got Cool. Uh, they could probably like like a pretty large plate too. Um, with like I think like yeah, they have a a, a pretty increased like appetite with like their new form. Oh, for sure. Um, and this and this like entire room is just like filled with the smells of like breakfast, you know, and brunch. You know, it's got that salty, savory kind of uh, smell in the air, and like a lot of it's still bullshit. warm. It's in those like uh ten, you know, those like ten uh those like ten like really thin almost like a thick foil uh, kind of containers uh, put on like the right wire racks uh, with like the little candle under it to keep it warm. Yeah. It's like that. Nice. Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah, you start piling on food onto onto these plates. I would say like just like eight pieces of bacon, like three eggs and probably like two servings of hash browns. Go for it. Cool. Is there any open spots or are they all kind of like... There is the seat that Dorothy just left. 
That's it. Uh, no, there are some other ones. Uh, uh, probably here and there. I think there are. I think there are probably a decent number of people here. Maybe like a dozen or so. Uh, so there's like spots here or there. Uh, but just so you know, the spot where Dorothy was sitting next to the people she was talking to is also open. Uh, but you can sit okay. anywhere you want, really. Um. Yeah, I'll take Dorothy's spot. Okay. Cool. Then, um, just to refresh us, uh, you are sitting next, uh, so like right to the right of where Dorothy was sitting is this older lady. I say older, I mean older than you. She looks like she's like in her thirties, uh, fluffy blonde hair. She's wearing glasses. I think I described her as having like high waisted jeans. Uh, does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah, I think she was wearing like high sleeve waisted jeans and like a, she had the a bright classic colored mom top. jeans. Yes. Yeah, exactly, and like a bright colored uh, top, and you see that I she also. I believe she had her hair in a scrunchie too, if I remember yes, correctly. Yes, her hair is in a yes. scrunchie. Okay. Um, uh, but she also has um her. It looks like she's getting like a little bit of fur, like striped fur, and her fingernails you can notice are like quite long, um, and. Uh, I would say she also, I'm also going to give her tiger eyes because that's cool. Um, that's kind of badass. That is yeah. cool. You're right. Right. Um, and you can I... see that like her hair is starting to like, starting to like get the semblances of like the tiger striped texture uh, in her hair, which is kind of cool. Um, and then uh, across from uh, where Dorothy was sitting uh, is Aaron. Um, Aaron, um, as I explained before, I said that they were a porpoise, but I've since come to learn that that is a generic term for a thing uh, and not like specific. Um, and so uh, I, they are a, a a river dolphin is what I've decided uh. <laughs> right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, they are a river dolphin. Um and they are in the wheelchair because, quite sadly, their legs uh, have uh, fused together to make the tail fin. Um, and uh, you, their skin is already starting to take on, like, the leathery dolphin-like uh, skin. They are beginning, uh, they are losing their hair. Uh, I, I think they're probably sh are shaved bald. Uh, but you can tell that there are, like, places on their body that, like, had hair that are, like, beginning to lose it, like, along their arms or such. And uh, they have been very quiet um, and, and and not really um, talking all that much. But uh, Dorothy, at the very least, uh, is aware that uh, they use they, them pronouns because uh, unlike most people that you have met here, uh, it seems to be a thing that they uh, are, that they prioritize. Um, and then next to Aaron, is Tyree, uh, who is this kind of short and stout balding man uh, turning into a capybara. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, he's just like a very serious man, uh, kind of looking like very office worker looker type, uh, looking type kind of guy wearing a, a button down shirt and like uh some uh like like a real earthy green like a pale earthy green pants uh and like leather brown leather shoes and so yeah these are the three people that you've sat down by walter are you gonna grab a plate or do you come over or do you what, what are you doing i mean come on for consistency's sake <laughs> i mean Wal walter's walter's getting some eggs Oh Come yeah, on. for sure, for <laughs> sure, absolutely. And you you notice actually that as you like uh, hop up there, there are plates there that are sized for people like you. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I th I think I think what, given you know given the given the circumstances, I think he's not as excited about the eggs as he as he uh, would would normally be. Uh, but he is definitely not going to pass up an opportunity to get some some good. I think he like loads a plate with like multiple like he, he has some over easy he has some scrambled mm -hmm. and it's all eggs. It's oh, all for eggs. sure. <laughs> oh, for sure. They also have some deviled eggs there as well. Hell oh. yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he's mm -hmm. going to get a few of those. And it's not like just paprika. It's also like a bit of uh, a bit of cumin as well. Ooh, that's Kidding. nice. Yeah, uh, but yeah, nice. you grab Very some nice. eggs. Uh, do you sit over where Dakota is, or do you try to mingle with some other people? 
I think I think Walter sits with Dakota. Okay, sounds good. I think he is too. I think that the the situation is sort of too tense to be like to be <laughs> honestly like letting Dakota out of his sight. Almost totally like, fair. Totally fair. Yeah. So that, that that's what he does. Okay. Cool. Um. Awesome. So yeah, the 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 two of you sit down, um, and almost immediately, um, Kayla, the tiger-looking lady, turns towards you. I'm trying to remember what her voice was like. I feel like it was really like uppity and like southern. Does that sound yeah. right? Southern like, seems vaguely right. Yeah. She or she'd had be a doll. like doll or something. Yeah. Yeah. Hey there. Sugar? I think she does say, say, she does sugar, say sugar at, say, at some yeah. point. Okay, I okay. do remember that. I'm getting a better idea of her. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, so uh, the two of you, like, uh, sit down. Dakota, you sit down where Dorothy was. Walter, you hop up on the table. Um, and she turns towards you and says, Now, what was all that about? Stuffs her face full of uh, some hash browns. Uh, Walter, with a... Uh... With a, a mouthful of eggs, says, "Oh, wow, well, wow, well, all, all what? Oh, what was uh, what was all what about?" Uh, okay, <laughs> all right, sugar. Um, the 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 three of you with um, Dorothy, y'all know Dorothy? Uh, yeah, I I'd, I'd say we do. Um, Dakota's kind of like still like looking at their plate, like eating. Um, and it's like. Yeah, we know her. Why? No reason. I was just asking. No need to be all tense, uh, Mr. Dakota kind of smiles at his food for a second, like kind of subtly. Um, how long has she been here? And has she said anything? No, she just got here. Um, right as we uh, started setting up. Huh. Um, Dakota kind of looks over and goes, she hasn't said anything nothing other than she uh she wants to go home or you know don't we all so more than others ain't that fair enough now and before she can keep going um y'all see that sister may actually comes back um uh from down the hall and in front of her uh, she has um the the carton television um uh, that technically we have already seen, but we need to keep this timeline consistent. Um, mm-hmm. And comes up and uh, grabs the attention of uh, Kayla, uh, and she says, oh, "I'll be right back, y'all." And she gets up uh, and goes with Sister May uh, down the hall, leaving the two of you with uh, Tyree and Aaron, both of whom seem a little quiet. Dakota kind of like puts puts his like his shoulders back and kind of leans back in the chair looking up a bit more and looks over to Aaron and is like Dorothy say anything to you they uh, look up to you from their plate real slow like um and shake their head now Dakota's like kind of takes a second look at them and is like oh shit like something obviously is like wrong here um but then like yeah it t- i think you can yeah. tell by the way they move they are in yeah. a lot of pain but dakota kind of like glances over that and doesn't want to like speak on it and kind of looks over to tyree and goes how about you well nah she she ain't say nothing to me I, you know she just you know came down here you know was talking to kaylin sat down at the table i talked to kayla we said you know we uh, we all just kind of get along here you know uh, she ain't said nah she ain't say nothing to me face down at food <laughs> so how long have you been here? And like, kind of looks around the like the table, kind of looking at everyone. Uh, me, I've been here. You know, I've I, I've been here a couple of weeks. You know, I, I came down. Um, I'm up from Maplewood, uh, and you know, I, I heard about this place. You know, saw some people that came from this place, and you know, that kind of you know, that's the kind of stuff I need in my life. You know, because like going through this you know it ain't when it's happening to someone else you know it's it's easy to just kind of look past but like it starts happening to you and you're like man like this stuff you know maybe maybe i do need to get on the street narrow <laughs> kind of stuff you know? you know what i'm talking about i mean well can't possibly know what i'm talking about you ain't, you ain't been through it but like you know once it happens i don't know it's like the end is all of a sudden put in front of you kind of deal you know it's not like a 
hearing yeah. this, Dakota kind of like scratches Walter on the head. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I guess uh I guess some of you have that experience, yeah. Well you say you ain't you ain't felt that before? I mean especially with like the way you <laughs> you're pretty far along, you know. I'm Sorry. saying I haven't given up. Yeah, wait. Ain't nobody saying nothing about giving up. That's why I'm here, you know? I'm trying to work through that. Yeah, well, giving, giving up looks uh, looks different for different people. <laughs> that's, okay. that's just you young folk. Uh-huh. Once you, once you get to my age, you ain't got the energy to keep fighting shit like y'all be doing, you know? I get it. You're angry. You're, you're angsty. Things aren't the way that, you know, things aren't the way that you expected them to go. I get it. I've been there, but I'm also not ready to go. I'm old, but I, I still got fighting me. I still got stuff I want to do. I still got stuff I'm passionate about. And like, if this is going to be the way that I'm going to be able to like keep going and be able to do that, then, you know, it's just a job. Yeah. Well, we all got a long road to walk. Some longer than others. Yeah. Either way, I'm... I like to do mine on two legs, if possible. But, uh, you know, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Takes a bit of bacon. <laughs> Dakota kind of shakes off the convo and turns to Aaron and goes, And you? How long have you been here? You see, um, there's this, like, kind of sound, almost, like, kind of groaning a little bit. A little bit like a, like a whistle, even. Like a like a light whistling, um, and you can tell that just by the way their body is moving and like like slightly expanding, you can tell that they're taking in a breath. Um, mm-hmm. But it might be it's it's gotta be from like a blowhole, perhaps somewhere on there there uh, behind them. Um, can I ask a maybe not important question? Go for it. Is Aaron on Dakota's gaydar? Interesting. Um, huh. You can make a roll here if you would like. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, let me get my dice out. This kind of seems like perception check. This kind of <laughs> this kind of feels like roll take a, a gander. I don't have fucking that. I don't have that move, and my noodles shit. Oh, <laughs> Rip. Tragic. <sighs> okay, we do our, we do a little gander rolling. We do a little gander. You take a it's long, a hard look. Describe what you're looking into and roll plus noodle. I'm looking in. I'm looking at Aaron and trying to kind of perceive more about them. Mm-hmm. Um, What's your noodle? I, I'm zero, and that's a minus two because I don't have the move. Okay. All right. Mm. What'd you roll? I rolled a, I rolled a three. Rolled a three. Okay, well, that's a pretty you get, low number. You get one experience point for that. Oh, oh, awesome. So epic. I will allow you to ask one question here, but I will not tell you if it's the truth or a lie. Oh, wow. Um, What are they thinking? Ooh, interesting. You can tell by. There's something. There's. I don't know. I. Hmm, okay, I think I know what this is. I think there might be a certain anxiety to Dakota, you know, that still lies in there, right? Underneath the package that is the, um, that is the symbol of authority of the stranger. There's still Dakota in there, right? And I think part of that insecurity is like going along with uh, his fear of, you know, being the center of attention and, and all of that is like this kind of judginess, right? That they become like hypersensitive of. And I think just the way that they're looking at you, even though that, you know, you might not be familiar with what looking at a river dolphin is like, even just like it's something about their eyes, maybe that makes you think that they're definitely like, He's a poser. He walks the walk, talks the talk, but at the end of the day, he's like, he's not a part of the community. He is a sellout. He is the enemy. He is everything that we're not supposed to be. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, they finally answer your question after taking this long, laborious 
breaths. Six months. <sighs> um, wow. Uh, and how's that been treating you? They just look at you. How, uh, how long do people usually stay here? Yeah, I mean, I guess, well, that depends. Because, like, some people leave here, like, fixed. And, you know, and, like, if you get fixed, like, you know, that's just changes on people. Some people, like, a couple, like, a week or two. Some people, a couple months, you know. Uh, you know, there's, like, you know, just kind of depends. And sometimes people change before they even finish it. So, like, I don't know. Go from weeks to months, I guess. I ain't never seen nobody last longer than, like, or I guess I've only been here a couple of weeks, right? But like, I've the longest I've heard someone been here is like maybe a year, maybe. But like, I heard that from a friend, so like, I, I I don't really know if that's like accurate, accurate. You know what I'm saying? Like, that could just be some shit he was saying. Uh huh. Yeah. What's the the quickest you've seen someone go through here? Actually, this guy this other day, uh, he came here. What turns to look at uh turns to look at Aaron? What like a two days um aaron painfully nods yeah um he actually is on his like final he's like on the final step like right now he should be getting out like pretty soon probably before the end of the day where is he oh he's in the 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 room the room that's vague ah oh, this uh, i don't know that's just what they call it it's the room place you do your final thing you know gone in uh, with sister may um you know, you have a bit of meditation time and then like she does the thing that bam, come back. And that's not uh that's not ominous ominous at all to you that they just call it the room. What else are they and supposed to call it? It's a room. It's not a room, it's the room. Yeah, and that's and what else do you want them to call the room? It's the room I don't know, where it like happens. The, the 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 friendly room or like the good room. Dog, I don't I, I, the friendly room it's not a room for friends I, I mean it yeah. might be you might be friends with the people in there I don't fucking know bro I just like I don't know it's the room do you not even get my point of whatever uh. what I'm just why is that like what else what would you call it if you had the ability to call it something what would you call it I don't know I don't know exactly what goes on in there it's the so. room where it happens I don't know you get cured that's almost worse the room where what about that? What about the I want to be in the room where it happens. What What's wrong with saying <laughs> you can the room stop where it happens right now, Kendrick? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Um. um I, I think Dakota is like. Okay, so this, the room is the process instantaneous. I mean, you guys have been here for months. You say have you regressed at all, or I mean. Like a little bit, I got um, and he, 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 um, I'm trying to think of a, a, a uh, okay, I know what he does. Um, it's like a little bit. Um, uh, I got and like <laughs> takes his foot, puts it on the table, uh, and you can see it's like a little capybara paw, like a little bit, but like you know that's because i wasn't doing the i i was off my game they caught me lacking you understand i i i could have been a little bit better i i did some stuff i shouldn't have done and you know i regressed a little bit um but you know it is what it is as far as if it's instantaneous or not i don't know it's uh you know the stuff that goes on in the room is secret you know we're not allowed to go in I don't think so. Pretty sure not. No one specifically told me not to, but that's just kind of the vibe I get, you know? So there's no rules that I can't go in there right now? I mean, not, like, technically, I guess. It's just the vibe, you know? It feels like a socially agreed-upon thing that we don't go in the room. So... I don't... I don't and then Dakota, Dakota kind of, like, taps, like, taps, like, the table and looks around. It's like, I don't see a sign. Again, it's not, like, a written-down thing. It's more like a... I don't know. It was just the... People were not going in the room, and I so I didn't go in the room. You get me? And Dakota. Yeah. Dakota kind of pushes, like, the chair away from the table and kind of stands up. <laughs> yep. Yep. Hey, yo, wait. Hold on, wait. Don't be going in the room, okay? I just... <laughs> Oh, I'm not, just... not going to go in. I'm not going to go into the room. Okay, but if you go I... in the room, don't say shit about me. I didn't tell you to go in there. <laughs> I told you specifically not to. I might... I might go in the room. 
Don't go in the... What? I don't know what no. this one's saying, but I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to lie about it. What? I might Are do you it. saying you don't want to I... know what's in the room? Are you not no. curious about what's behind that door? No, I'm too old and too... Like, no, that's... Don't you get what you're supposed to do here? I, you... How Part old of it are you? Is, what? Yeah, how old are you? You're not supposed to ask an old man his age. Damn. Man, you I, kids. I mean, you kids. <laughs> I, I, I just want to say, I legitimately don't know how old I am. So, uh, it's a valid question. I ain't been keeping count, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Why is okay. this about my age? I, no, I know a, y'all are young. I know y'all are young. I can see it. I can feel I really, it. I really don't care that much about your age. I, I'm more interested in what's in that room, so I'm going to go in that room and see what's in it. I, but I didn't tell you to do it, and don't you keep my name out of your mouth. Uh-huh, yeah. Dakota kind of starts walking away from the table and puts his hand out for Walter to jump in. Yeah, Walter does. Awesome. <laughs> you two walk away. Also, I fucking loved... Uh, <laughs> I loved playing that character. I hope he comes back. <laughs> we can make that happen. Oh my god, he's so fun. That was not at all how I was. I saw that character up until that moment. <laughs> and it just felt right. Um, awesome. Uh, I guess we can keep with you all, because I think the yeah. Dorothy thing might go on a little longer. So, um, cool. Um, do we know where the room is? Yeah, I don't think you do. How do you go about trying to find um, out where this room is? I, I look back at it's Hyrie, right? Yeah. As I walk by, I go, can you point me in the direction of the room I'm not supposed to go in? Well, it sounds like if I do that, you're going to go in that room. No, I just want to know where it is. We're going to go in the room I, either I wanna, way. I want to know which room I can't go in. If there's no sign telling me which one I can't go in, then how I, am I supposed to know? Give me a grift roll. Oh, fuck. You try to convince someone to do something against your self-interest. Uh, <laughs> against their grift. self-interest. Um, I don't have grift and I have a minus one to mush. Uh, uh, wait, uh, Walter could do it as well because yeah, it sounds like you're it. both yeah it sounds like you're both kind of going for it and then yeah uh dakota p- can be giving you help so you have advantage sick i'm a fan of the players oh my god i forgot dice give me a second oh, you're you good, mean, i mean i could roll for you oh uh, okay yeah like, yeah you yeah. sure yeah no that, that that's fine my dice have been fucked recently so all right that one's a five Five? Yeah, I get two rolls though, don't I? You do get to roll one more d6 and take the higher of the three. Okay, I'll roll the next one. That's just, okay, it makes it to ten. Okay, ten. Uh, so okay. yeah, it doesn't even <laughs> yeah. matter. Jesus. Uh, they, they trust you and will do what you say, so as long as it doesn't endanger them directly. Alright, it's so over there. And like points <laughs> and points to uh, uh, down the hall, the opposite way that Dorothy and um, everybody else has gone. Um, it's down that hall. You're going to make a lift at the end of that hall. You're going to uh, see like a door that's uh, got like a little exit sign. You're going to take that door and it actually just takes you to a stairwell. And then you're going to take that stairwell down a couple floors uh, to floor number uh, to, 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 to basement two. And then you're going to take that door, go down the hall over to the right. Um, and then uh, it's going to be it's going to be a big like double door kind of deal, you know, like a like like one of them big ones. And it's got like the circular holes in it where the windows is. Yeah, it, it's that door. And on it, there's a sign that says the room. You'll see it. They put they put windows on a room I'm not supposed to go in. Do I look like the man who built this? Nah, I didn't. That, yes, that's the it's hard to get to, you understand. Did you not hear? It's not like a door that people are normally right by, I guess. It was de- I don't I didn't build it. I didn't build it. Why are you asking me? Yeah, I'm gonna go in that room. Yeah, all right. <laughs> but again, I didn't tell you to do it. Alright, we kinda start making our way to that stairwell. Alright. Um I think on on his way out, Dakota kinda gives one lance like glance of like sympathy and care for Aaron. Um yeah. Uh, hmm. Do they see it? Do they notice? Do they feel it? I'm gonna flip a coin. Oh no! Heads. Oh no! They see it. Tails. They don't. Okay. Cool. So you guys keep walking. <laughs> um, uh, you follow his directions, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Of course. Did you think he was? Did you think he was gonna tell us what the results were? 
come on. <laughs> Wait, it could have been any of the results. You're just not going to tell us? Yeah. What did I tell you? I told you, you with the... You son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, could have been any result. Who knows? I know. Um... <laughs> okay, cool. Marcy's going feral. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> would, you pref- would you prefer to know? I can just tell you. No, I don't think it's a big no, deal. No, it's too late. It's too late. Okay, okay cool. Uh, so you all follow his instructions, and sure enough, you find the door. The path that you take, it feels so weird um, doing this. Uh, this, like, the hallways are almost, like, maze-like or, like, labyrinthian oh. in a way where it feels like every hallway just kind of looks the same. And then, like, you're going downstairs into other hallways that look exactly the same. And, like, there aren't numbers on any of these doors. So it's really hard to tell the difference between any of them. And every hallway, you're just like, at a certain point, you're like, are we walking in circles? I have no idea. But you do eventually come to it and two floors below the basement. You were already in, by the way. Um, Wow. And uh, you find these doors. And sure enough, uh, they're big oak double doors with small circular windows in it that you like look through the you look through the windows and like nothing. It's like almost like you're looking into a void behind them. But you come to these doors. Uh, Dakota kind of looks like I'm assuming that Walter is on my shoulder by now. Yeah. Uh, Dakota kind of looks over is like, so <clears throat> you or me first. Um, we do this together? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I want them to know that we're here. As a note, I want us mm-hmm. to do this now. Uh, Brittany is with you. I forgot about Based. her, but she's with you. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, Dakota looks back to Brittany and goes, Are you coming? Yeah. If this is a part of uh, the mission, I don't see why not. Okay. Um, as. Like, like, right before Dakota, like, puts his hand to open the door, um, he puts one of his other hands on the grip of the break sword. Um, okay. And I'm assuming it uh, it transforms in his hand into um, the weapon to pierce all the fences. Mm-hmm. Um, it is It grows in length about the size of, like, a long sword with um, a sort of, like, it's, it, it becomes the, the, the already encrusted plants from the botanical garden on it seem to grow and flourish and become more root-like. Um, the guard is covered in roses and thorns, and thorns kind of continue to um, appear down like the, the blade. Um, the cross guard is like a tangled ivy um, with the small rose embellishments. That's sick as fuck. Um, and Dakota opens the door. So as you go to open the door, you put your <laughs> hand on, because they're like kind of push doors. You put your hand on it, and as soon as you do, it reacts in this way where it glows where your hand is, almost as if it was like scanning your hand. Um, oh, shit. And at first, like you start pushing it, and it feels like they feel like locked like closed but as soon as like the glow fades you feel there's some give and you are able to push the doors open and as you do you see a very long set of stairs going down kind of uh, curving at the end almost as if it was prepared to go in like a circular motion and goes down you can see the materials that these stair that this like staircase is made out of changes a little way down where they start up the same kind of like short pale like green like carpet that kind of looks like grass that the rest of the church has um to being brick it's like stone brick and like huh. cobblestone almost Hmm. Uh, Dakota keeps taking steps forward. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And you all continue down these stairs. We're going to cut over to Dorothy. Dorothy. Hello. You just finished watching a movie. That I did. How are you feeling? Um, I think, you know, watching a life play out in front of her that's maybe hers. 
may be what awaits her if she gets back to the real world Mm -hmm. is like a lot to take in and process as um a literal child yeah um but i think with that same lens there's a lot of it that i think you know it doesn't hit her in the same way as it would hit you know a 20 something watching it or even a teenager watching it Mm -hmm. um seeing you know seeing her working a uh a a minimum wage job that doesn't hit the same way as it does for somebody who's been in that industry before that doesn't Mm -hmm. give her that sense of despair perhaps that is associated with that sort of thing but like seeing a life played out and seeing you know that she dies young 40 is not super young to a seven-year-old mm-hmm. and i think she does see a lot of things in that film that maybe weren't supposed to be taken as positives or as things that she could want or things that she could adjust to or grow to want and i think mm-hmm. that her looking at all of that and seeing some of those things it's maybe you know Maybe this film hasn't worked quite the way it was supposed to on her. Like, it's traumatizing for sure. It's a lot of stuff for her to take in, but there's definitely things that she sees in that film that she is happy about or almost encourage her to keep holding out because it's something that she does want. Yeah. So I think she's just sitting and parsing through all of that stuff on the bed um maybe i think yeah i think she's just sitting and parsing through all of that and yeah. trying to think about what her next move is if she is going to keep pursuing this idea of getting back home because i don't think this has dissuaded her from that objective what does dorothy think about the fact that like what does she think the point of this was like why does like what is her belief about why they gave her this movie i don't think she has like the she knows you know like maybe anything of like an insidious want of like she knows that this is probably a thing that the sublime is throwing at her in the way that it has this whole time of like you don't want to go home and i don't think she even you know clocks that this she's like probably just accepting that yeah this is maybe the life that she would go back to um she's not clocking that you know it could be altered or not completely true but um i think that she does know that it was something to probably dissuade her from her her objective Mm -hmm. and it hasn't changed okay and i think she feels more steadfast in that objective even a little Mm -hmm. bit more Like, she's been stubborn this whole time, but, like, this almost cements it. If she's going to take this at face value, she was not devastated by what she saw. Mm Mm-hmm. That's still a life that she wants. Okay. So you are in here, in the room that they gave you, um, Mm -hmm. shortly after watching... Uh, this movie uh you've you know the credits have rolled the stranger has given himself every credit under the sun um (laughs) and uh you are sitting i would imagine or did you stand and watch this this whole movie i think i've been you know sitting maybe pacing at times i probably you know talked to the screen a couple times and yeah but i mean overall i think i've mostly been passively absorbing this movie yeah i think elsie has just been like silent this whole time uh Mm -hmm. sitting on the bed edge of her seat like clinging to a pillow like watching (laughs) uh it all play out um i think she like reacts verbally with you as you do uh watching Mm -hmm. uh, events play out um and yeah, I think the two of you are now just like sitting in silence and like a slightly dark room um, in the uh, just like kind of uh, processing everything that's happened. Uh, I go over to the TV mm-hmm. and I press the rewind button. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
you hear the uh, a, a sound that would not be very familiar to Dorothy, but is very familiar to us of the tape rewinding uh, in the VCR. And I don't bother to like stop it before I hit the rewind, so I'm I'm just like seeing flashes of it going back oh, again. Yeah, just yeah, like yeah, yeah, taking. Like, you know, just seeing little bits that I recognize again, just like processing still, but mm-hmm. knowing that they are still all there, I guess. Yeah. What parts stand out to her? Like, as soon as they flash across the screen, she's like, oh, yeah, that was that moment. Something that stuck with her. Um, I think definitely her time in the park with Dakota. That's one of the first ones that she recognizes going in reverse. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she, you know, clocks like high school graduation. Mm-hmm. She clocks um the the gas station where uh Hazel and Dakota fight. Yeah, she just like sees you know these different moments that are like really formative and important for this life, and just uh kind of logs them away again, just like reaffirming like oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That is what I saw. That is, that's still there. Okay. Yeah, you rewind it all the way until it gets to the end, um, making like a loud, like clicking noise. Um, I eject the tape. Okay. And I put it in my pumpkin. Okay. Uh, you put it right alongside Timmy and Toby. Toby. Timmy and Toby. How are they doing? They're doing all right. Um, there are. I think one of them is just lying at the bottom of the pumpkin, kind of relaxing. And I think there's one of them maybe at the edge of it, mm-hmm. clawing at the side. I scoop him out into my hand. Okay. All right. And I put him on the bed, so he, like maybe wander around a little bit. Yeah. Stretches his legs, walks around a little bit, stares at you and Elsie. So... I guess I have to go find... I don't know if Walter and Dakota are even trying to get back anymore, Elsie. I don't know either. Maybe. Well, I'm not going to find out by being here. I have to know what they're doing so I know what I need to do. What we're going to do. All right. You're the leader. And she kind of salutes you. <laughs> um. Yeah. I, I like sit for a little bit longer. I let... I'm just going to say that it's Toby. Um, wander around <laughs> for a little bit. And I eventually, like, scoop him back into the pumpkin. I grab my little, my my hat. I, I would assume that I got my clothes back, or I would have asked for them back. You have yet to get them back, because last they told you they were washing them. Mm, okay. Okay. Then I grab my pumpkin, and I go ahead and... Start uh, looking for Miss Kayla. Okay. Or Sister May, whoever I run across first. Totally fair. Uh, this seems like it could be a roll. You do I have that. I suppose it could be. Yeah. You have stumbled, stumbled upon. upon. Yeah. Let's see who you could run into. Oh. What's that shiny clue over there? Roll plus noodle. That is... A 10. A 10. You mindlessly find a clue. So you go off and uh, into the church and you are looking around for Sister May. Uh, uh, Sorry, uh, you're looking for Kayla. Or Sister May. You said whichever, I said whoever I, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, So you are walking around looking for one of the two older people that you've seen. Kind of wandering the church and kind of like how I was saying before, it feels very easy to get lost in these seemingly identical hallways. And, you know, you you come across some people every now and then. You, like, see open doors uh, where, like, maybe one person is like in the frame of the door talking to someone uh, inside of the room. And some of them seem like similar living situations to what you have. Some of them seem like they may be offices of some kind. You're, you're not quite sure. But yeah, you're kind of going around looking. And I think eventually you come across a door that says Sister May on it, on a plaque. It's one of the few doors that have like an actual identification to go along with it. 
So yeah, and that's and it's at the end of a hallway, like uh, one of the few dead end hallways as well. So like at the very end of it, like last door as you go straight of uh, straight ahead. Okay, um, if I see that, I'm just I'm gonna wander right up to it and. Okay. Is the door open or closed? Uh, it is a closed door. Okay, I knock on it. You knock on it. Uh, you wait for a second. There's no answer. I try the handle. It is unlocked. Okay, I I push open the door and I I poke my head in. And I sister May. You poke your head into this room and it's an office, um, a little larger than some of the off- other offices that you had seen uh, that seemed like more administrative, had like filing cabinets in it, so on and so forth. This is like a much larger office. Um, <coughs> excuse me. There is a difference in carpet here, first of all, that would be like very readily apparent. Um, it is... It's it, it's almost designed in a way where it is a top-down view looking at the top of the big tree that's in the middle of town that I've described before, looking down and like this some like a quadratic like symmetry and like the roots going out to the corners of it and then growing into the borders along the edges, um, growing in vines and shrubbery and such. And it's like this um, very autumnal um, coloration of golds, brown, oranges, uh, and reds. There is this dark wood desk at the far end of the office, uh, opposite of the door. Um, and behind it is a large stained glass uh, depiction, very similar to the one that you saw upstairs of the uh, the vertical eye uh, that's open with the hands around it, like Sarah from Wings, uh, attempting to like grasp uh, the eye. And uh, bookshelves along uh, one end of the room that looks like a little bit of a sitting area where there's a smaller like coffee table with some chairs by it on the desk, like some paperwork and such. And then along the walls, there are paintings, it looks like. Um, Very gorgeous um, watercolor paintings. And uh, yeah, that's that's, uh, what you see in here. Sister May is not in here, though. Cool. I... Sorry, I'm going to add one more detail to this room. Okay. On the other side of the room... Uh, from like the small seating area that I described, there is another table, a larger table, almost like a kind of familiar looking table. It's like a train set. Um, oh no! I'm gonna, I'm kind of, I'm kind of walk over to the train set. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Nope. This is cool. This um, is fine. <laughs> this is good. It. I think it catches your eye first of all because it's just like a weird thing to be in this room. It doesn't really match any of the other stuff. Uh, but it seems like very well taken care of. It looks familiar. And like as you get closer and like you take a look over it, it is like almost identical to the one that you saw in Edgar's basement, mm-hmm. but a couple of days ago. Can I tell if it's just? nearly identical or if it is the same table i'll give you this it is the same table has anything on it changed yeah it looks like it's in a different state than the previous one and the biggest thing here very strangely uh near one of like the small towns on the table where the tracks seem to go by um there is a train that is off of the rails and like lying on its side Huh. <laughs> huh. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um. Are there any? I don't see like any other possessions of Edgar's. In like, was this like confiscated from him, or like? Um. No. Not. I. I don't think you see anything. Hmm. Is it just a train off of the tracks, or do I see like? A little car or like a, yeah, do I see like a car? Do I see any other things? I don't think you see a car, but you do see like a small like town that's next to where it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's spooky. Um, (laughs) Can I, can I go take a look at whatever 
paperwork is on this desk? Sure. Um, this sounds like it could be a take a gander. Sure. So, uh, you take a long, hard look around, describe what you're looking into, roll plus noodle. <sighs> All right. Do I want to roll these dice? I'm making a, I'm making a decision here. Yes, Who's decide. Who's going to treat me well? Who? I'm going to do you and you. All right. Let's go. That was not the correct way to do this. Um, <laughs> it's a five. That's a failure. Take an experience. <laughs> Okay. And same deal, you get to ask one question, but I will not tell you if it's a truth or a lie. Oh, all right. What here isn't as it appears to be? What here is not what it appears to be. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Oh, or do I want to? No, nope, I've made my choice. Okay. You get over to the desk. And you see there's, like, some paperwork and stuff on it. You're looking through all of, like, the papers and stuff, and it's a bunch of paperwork that, like, none of this makes sense to you. Some of it looks like it might be passages from a book. Not quite sure. Might be some religious text of some kind. Um, but as you're doing that, Elsie is looking at all of the books on the bookshelves. And as she does that, you hear, like, a boom, boom, like a thud sound. And... Uh, you turn to look over to her and it looks like she tried to like climb up the bookshelf a little bit to grab one of the, the books that are up there. And uh, she was pulling on this book and it wasn't coming out and looks like she pulled on it so hard that she fell off uh, after having lost her leverage and like kind of put the book out, but it's like tilted at a weird angle. Um, and you see that the bookshelf starts moving and oh. <laughs> it slides open. Revealing a door. Uh, God. Dorothy wishes more than ever that she had her flashlight. Um, uh, all right. This, I just realized this didn't really answer a question. This was more like a skid, like a, like a <laughs> thing. Um, I don't know. What is in here? What it appears to be the bookshelf. Yeah. More than a bookshelf. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot to give me on a five. <laughs> so. Is it? <laughs> oh, no. Don't say that. I don't know. Um. So, yeah, you see this door on this bookshelf. Very strange. Very spooky. Mm -hmm. Is it? Is it? A, it's a door. So it, mm -hmm. the, 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 there's another door. It's not mm -hmm. open. It's not open. Mm. Actually, I think it's maybe... Yeah, yeah, it is a door. It is a door. Okay. So it's not like the bookshelf was a door. To It, it has moved and there is a door. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. No doubt. Um, I look at Elsie. And I go, what book were you trying to get? Um, huh. Damn it, why would you ask me this? Um <laughs> Cuz Elsie to... decided to go for a specific book and I would I don't know why she's done that and I'd like to know. She um, climbed up a bookshelf for it. Yeah, she did. It's obviously uh, something interesting. Uh she says, uh, I'm not sure, but it had a dragon on the side. It looked a cool. Dragon? It looked like it had a picture on it on it when I tried to pull it out. Um, and you go to, you like kind of go to the, like you go to look at like what book it was that she got, um, uh -huh. or try to get. And, uh, on the front of it is like this really interesting, like picture. It, it, it feels weird. It's like, it's three people, one of them in like a suit of armor and like another one in like robes or something. And they're like. The one in robes has like a staff and it's like shooting light at what looks like a dragon on it. Um, and like the text, uh, it, it it says mazes and monsters. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I can't. Yeah. So, okay. I, I like look at, you know, the front of this book that's like hanging out of the bookshelf now. Mm -hmm. um, does it just like generally... Does it look like it belongs on this bookshelf? Or is it like, does it stick out as like a different kind of book? Which is it why, like, It sticks out as yeah. a different kind of book. Yeah. 
it's like a lot of it looks like kind of like history text religious books big leathery mm -hmm. books that a child would like just see and go okay yeah like encyclopedias <laughs> basically yeah exactly this book stands out hmm. yeah i look at lc and i like look at the book and i go it does seem to be a different book doesn't seem like it really belongs there right but why is there a secret door in, in sister may's office i don't know i didn't put it there she says as she starts to get up and like dust herself off should we do all these people have secret doors the sheriff had a secret door sister may has a secret door maybe when you grow up you just start getting a lot of secrets and you gotta have a place to put them i guess huh um i'm going to look back at like the office door i'm gonna peek my head out like into the hall real quick yeah did i see anybody no cool i closed the door okay so that the office looks like how i found it mm -hmm. and uh i go over to the the, the 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 door behind the bookcase and i try to handle uh it opens um it is this it's just this simple wooden door uh and you uh take the knob open it up and behind it is a very strange thing it is a hallway that goes straight um, and uh, to another door. And the floor is just like this simple tile that goes between the two doors. But along the walls, it's almost as if the walls are made of wires. Like, and not like thin, small wires, almost like large cables, you know? Um, if you've ever been into like a like an engineering school, um, or like the College mm -hmm. of Engineering at whatever university you've ever been to, or at least the one at Mizzou, the way that they kind of designed things was this, not like an open concept, but like open in that the walls and ceilings weren't ever fully closed. And you can kind of see into the interior of how that kind of worked. Uh, in a way, it, I, I thought it was kind of cool. And I like that kind of design is like being able to see like what's behind it. And like that's it's like that. But there's not even like a facade of a wall here. There's just wiring and cable going in between, like along the walls in between these two doors and like like almost on the other end, looking like they're plugging like back into the wall and whatever cabling is just going on uh, into like whatever is back there. Um. Okay, I just I I I just I'm gonna follow these cables down the down the hallway. Okay. You follow them down to the second door, and the door there is not wood. It feels almost like it feels like a, a, a modern door that you would see almost it looks like this sliding metal door um with symbols and such on it that you've never seen before. Is there like a, a is there any like space under the door like a modern door like no 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 when I'm like I'm like this door is built into the wall okay it's like a it's like a sliding door at like a, like a a grocery store like a that kind of thing but instead of being mm. glass it's metal gotcha well I put my ear up to it yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna put my ear up to the door see if I can hear anything. You can't hear anything. There's maybe like a low, like, um, electrical hum. Have I, I mean, I feel like I haven't heard electrical hums here very much. I mean, there was a TV in like Edgar's house, but like, yeah. I think I'm a little, I think Dorothy's a little bit taken aback at seeing all of this like electricity. Yeah, this is, yeah like this is the most technological thing that you have ever seen in this world or your own yeah like this feels like something out of a sci-fi movie for dorothy not like anything else here hasn't felt like out of yeah. some kind of movie but <laughs> a weird movie but yeah okay uh pfft. she said the door is like a sliding door it has some weird symbols on it mm -hmm. i look back at elsie and like look back at the door and back at elsie I go, what the, what is this door doing here? I don't know, but I think we should open it. How? The 
I don't know, try pressing a button or something? I don't know, Elsie. I th this is weird. This doesn't look like anything else here. Right? Isn't that cool? I don't, I mean, maybe, but I don't know. I'm definitely not supposed to be here. No, I don't think we should. I don't think we were supposed to just go into her office like that. But we did, and we're here. All of this. I mean, this is a lot more than I've seen anywhere else. Maybe, maybe Sister May really does know how to get me back home. Maybe. Maybe it is a door home. I don't know about that. She shrugs. But it's worth a shot. I'll just say that I got lost. Yeah. Right, I go ahead and like, I, I look at this door. I think I'm just gonna like trace my hand over a couple of like the symbols. Like just like, are they like raised? Are they indented? Are they just printed into the metal? Like what's the deal with them? I think they're raised into it. Um, like raised from them, like not like almost as if someone like welded them onto it. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? Um, so not like seamlessly like part yeah, of it, but like on no. or yeah, exactly. And uh, I think you rub your uh, your fingers across like some of them, and I think they glow as you do. And the door like and like slides open with this like mechanical um precision and like wearing in a way that you have not seen in this world otherwise and it leads into this room it's almost kind of like a walk-in closet maybe a little larger um where you're able to like walk in stand and there is a kind of podium with a keyboard on it and wall to wall on all sides are the screens and like wires are coming out of these screens like embedding uh, themselves and in, like into the wall like and all of them are like uh like they're all coming at like different angles uh where there are for almost like arms built into the wall that are like holding on to them and like on the screens, they're just like kind of flipping through footage of what looks like some of the rooms in this church, um, including some of the rooms people are staying in. Um, other mm. rooms, like other like main, like the like you see like the main kind of area, like upstairs where where sermons happen, and then you see that some of them are from places in town. <laughs> like in some of the stores and just like on the streets and in people's houses. <laughs> no. Oh my God. Hey everybody, it's me again, your award-winning Game Master, here to do the mid-roll for our award-winning podcast. If you haven't heard already, the results for the 2021 Audioverse Awards... Uh, have come out. And thanks to, well, the support of all of you, uh, Tales Yet Told has won two of those awards. One for Best New Improvised Production and one for Best Player Direction for a new improvised production. And hey, that's me. And thank you all so much for uh, going out and, like, I guess, voting for us and telling uh, people to go vote for us, I guess. I mean, I'm not really sure how it happened, but boy, howdy, did it happen. And we are uh, very excited for that. And it means that you all are out there supporting us in ways that we don't always get to see. And that means so much. So thank you for taking the time out of your day, as always, to listening to this podcast. And if you want to find other ways to help support us, you can always follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Tales Yet Told. It's also where we give most of the information out about what's going on in this podcast, what's going on with our new actual play stream, Prayers in the Static, that's on, well, on Twitch. And if you haven't heard about it, well, maybe you should be following us because I talk about it at least a couple of times a week. Um, but yeah, we also have an actual play stream. If you enjoy what we're doing here, head on over to that. It's on twitch.tv forward slash bards and brews we stream every other friday at 7 p.m central 
building together a, a wonderful sci-fi world. And we just recently finished our game of Microscope, kind of building out the background and like uh, the skeleton of the setting. And now we will just be kind of rotating through different games with different people, building out more parts of the world, seeing what's going on in the setting. And you know what? I'll even give you a sneak peek because you, you're here. You're not like the rest of those people. You listen to the mid-roll, deep in the mid-roll, where you find out that we're playing Mothership. Right? I'm so excited. We already know who our guests are going to be. You're going to have to wait for that, but it's going to be so much fun, ready for some sci-fi spooky stuff, and it's going to be great. And you can find out all about that by following us on Twitter and Instagram. And if you like this podcast and you like what we're doing, please, please, please tell your friends and rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, wherever you can go to go talk about this podcast podcast and how much you like about it to people please go do that because we're broke we don't have any money for advertising or promos really so everything is going to be through word of mouth and it means so much so so much i know i'm begging but i really really love this project and i know everybody working on this loves this as well and if you want to support us the best thing you can do is help us try to get the world out there it really really means so much and last but of course not least i want to give a huge shout out to the be gay roll dice network for allowing us to be in their little community of queer creators making actual play podcasts out here for queers like us and by queers like us and i've got a little promo coming up for them like in a couple of seconds so don't forget so don't forget to eat enough food drink enough water get enough sleep and take care of yourself because self-care is very important and don't forget to love yourself like we love you peace out the year is 2225 and the end of the universe is nigh welcome to the junket podcast the Junket Podcast is an actual play and really gay TTRPG adventure currently running the Maelstrom campaign, a science fiction take on Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition featuring spaceships, space aliens, and a whole bunch of space gays. Follow a found family of misfits and miscreants on a cosmic caper that features science and magic, love, loss, and a whole lot of laughter. Who knows, maybe they'll even save the universe or something along the way. Did that tickle your fancy? If it did, new episodes launch every other Thursday at 5pm GMT on all major and minor podcasting platforms. See you soon in the Maelstrom Galaxy. <laughs> Big brother's watching. And we're going to cut to Dakota and Walter. <laughs> Guess I like how you turned on your camera for this. <laughs> this is yeah. the time to choose. This is the time to choose to switch over. This is the time. The time yeah. 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 I, I great think, time to do that. Yeah. Cool I, and great. Interesting. And good and great. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah um awesome okay cool uh so dakota and walter we walking downstairs yeah the two of you we sure are yeah the two of you as well as Brittany, uh are walking down these stairs and of course by this point you've gotten to the part where the stairs change from the carpet uh material into like these weird cobblestone stairs and as you're walking into it like the walls also kind of change in a way where they start looking more like stone brick and kind of just like weird, almost castle-y, like old cathedral style looking uh, kind of materials. And eventually you all come to this landing and it is like an old, old chapel. Like, has Dakota played Elder Scrolls? Um, Dakota's probably watched a YouTuber play Elder Scrolls. Yeah, for sure, right? Um, Checks out. This looks like something that you'd see, like, in a castle in, like, 
Morrowind, I guess. I I was trying to think mm, of the one that isn't uh, Morrowind. Probably not I, Morrowind. Yeah. Yeah, no, because that's in. Yeah, Oblivion. Are you, are you maybe thinking of it, Cyrodiil? Oh, shit. Fuck the off. province of Cyrodiil. Oh, fuck off. Shit. Oh, fuck off. Is that uh, what you're thinking fuck of? Fuck off. Uh, you, <laughs> it looks like something that you'd see in like Oblivion. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what that means, but Dakota might... Uh, yeah okay sorry yeah skeletons. it feels i mean like i guess like for the 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 case of us it it feels like something that f- feels like like a really stereotypical medieval fantasy looking ass chapel okay like creepy though creepy in that it is an empty space that looks like it has not been touched by people eyes uh in a while okay and um, um, they're like old pews covered in dust and maybe some cobweb, uh, like like um, canned like candles, like tall like candlesticks uh, against the walls. You see uh, old stained glass that you can't really see out of because there's no light coming through them, um, and oh. like an old stone altar at the front of it uh, that does have like can like. Like kind of like uh, three pronged oh, candlesticks awesome. that have candles on them that are not lit, but definitely feel newer than awesome anything else in here. Cool. Um, my first thought goes: Are there gonna be like Indiana Jones like tile traps? <laughs> Is this like yeah. a proper dungeon? Would you like <laughs> to take a gander? Uh, um, know. no. Okay. <laughs> Do we kind of be mean... worried about skeletons? <laughs> you hear a drogger um, move. <laughs> oh no! Um, I guess Dakota kind of walks, and this is a room, right? Yeah, it's a room. Yeah, is it the room? I guess this is the place you got to after going through the door that says uh, the room. So I guess. So, well, then. Dakota walks into the room very hesitantly, um, kind of like a chill running up his spine. Yeah, for sure, understandable. Um. I would say that Dakota takes one of the candles off the wall and uses it to kind of light as they walk towards the altar. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you take one of the candles off. Well, you have to go up to the... Uh, no, nah, I'll say some of the old ones have a camera candles as well. So you can take one up. Uh, what do you use to light it? I just assume they're already lit. Oh, shit. No, it's dark um, in here. It's dark. Bud. Um. Oh, Dakota turns to Brittany and goes, you got a light? Oh, yeah, Brittany's here. Yeah, Brittany is here. Uh, she said, uh, you like kind of like motion like the, the, the candle towards her. She puts her fingers over, snaps, and it catches a oh, flame. Oh, that's so cool. Kick ass. Uh, Dakota kind of like looks at like his own hand and kind of like snaps his fingers a little. It does the same. Oh, that! <laughs> okay, Dakota like definitely like is like sitting and like staring for like at least a good few minutes, like just doing this. Yeah. It's just like a quick like spark and like maybe like yeah. a little bit of like flame um, enough so that if you want it to just like light like a candle or something like that, you imagine that the reason that this exists is because the driver does it to smoke. Yeah, of course. Yeah, for sure. That's fucking and then cool. Who, and whoever made it was like, ah, oh, that would just be cool if they could do that. Yeah. Okay. Um yeah i will say okay. the difference between the two of yours is that sh- when she does it it's like a con- like she does it and it's like a flame like it's like a lighter yours is just a spark that's still cool uh dakota does that for a little bit and like kind of shakes it off and is like oh shit looks over to walter is like dude this is fucking cool <laughs> I take it that's, uh, I take it, I take it that's new. That's, uh, it's not something you've always been able to do. No, Walter, I just shoot sparks from my fingertips. I don't know your story. Dakota kind of, like, <laughs> snaps, like, one of the sparks, like, close to Walter. Okay, okay. <laughs> I got fur. Gotta be careful um, with that, man. <laughs> uh, Dakota then takes the candle and, like, lifts it up and, and walks into the room, kind of looking around a bit cautiously. Yeah, for sure. You're looking around. Are you sure you don't want to take a gander? I'll take a gander if okay. if, if, if yeah, if someone you can. Want, like... Yeah, for sure. Uh, just saying because it's the easiest way for me to be able to give you information. Um, no, I, yeah, I, I didn't want to do it because man, I don't have those stats. Yeah, no, totally understandable. Yeah. Uh, so for Gus, sure, for sure. Go ahead and roll me a noodle roll. 
yeah, uh, Marcy, do you want to roll for me again? Because I, I, uh, I, we had a long period of time where I could have easily gone and gotten dice, and I uh, didn't. So I, I could got also you. roll Pink. for you. Oh, there you go. You got it. All right. Oh, sweet Jesus. Okay, that's a seven. Well, I don't know what your mush is or your, what your noodle, but it's a seven. I have plus two, so it's a nine. Nine. All awesome. right. Amazing. My favorite one. Ask your GM two of the following questions. One answer will be the truth, the other a lie. Yeah. Okay. Let me do what should I be wary of and what here is not what it appears to be. Okay. The first thing I'll give you. Um, as Dakota is taking this candle, going around, looking, you are noticing that the way the light um, from the candle kind of plays off of certain things feels a little weird. And there's some shadows where things are not, or it appears they're not, but it, you see that they are. Um, and like, just based on like the way like light is kind of glinting off of stuff and that it, it feels like that there is something that is on that altar that the two of you cannot see. Um, and also that there are what seem to be cables or wires or something going from the altar, like away from it, like going like out towards the walls and such. Uh, so that is the answer for what here is not what it appears to be. And... You, at the same time as you're, like, kind of noticing that and, like, looking uh, for it, you hear sounds of someone coming down the stairs behind you all. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Walter says to Dakota, hey, uh, be, uh, be careful. I don't think we're, uh, I don't think we're alone. And something about this place is not right. Well, I could have told you the last part. Um, it kind of blows out the candle and, like, ducks behind the altar yeah you duck behind the uh, um the altar uh, i think Brittany does as well um <laughs> actually i think Brittany uh goes over to like one of the pews and like hides in between them walter what do you do i think walter is there is there, is there like a third place he could hide i mean yeah Just there like... are plenty of places there uh there are um I'll say there are also like large like banners coming down from like the like the top of the wall to like the bottom of them, kind of Wait, decorative. Can I ask a question? Is there a confessional booth in here? Yeah, sure. Why not? Can I go in there instead? Oh yeah, for sure, absolutely. Okay, you hop into a confessional booth, Walter. Yeah, uh, yeah. I want to find like just a very a place that a weasel could hide, but a person couldn't. Yeah, like uh, underneath like one of the pews behind be the uh, yeah. yeah 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 underneath yeah. the pew yeah. Okay, cool. So you hop underneath a pew. Walter hides behind one of the candles. <laughs> <laughs> um, Walter just holds a candle, disguising himself as a candle. Uh, he hides under a pew. Yeah. You hide under a pew. Dakota goes into a confessional, and Brittany hides in between two of the pews. Um, the... Three of you are in hiding. You eventually, you all start to hear the sounds of like something coming down the stairs. And as it does, you realize that the sound is maybe a bit more mechanical than you would have previously thought. Almost like you hear like the sound of like wearing, like wearing like gears and like what sounds like metal against stone. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. who would see this first? Walter, from underneath the pews, you're kind of like looking back, like towards like the doors, uh, and the first things that you like, the first like thing that you see that tells you that someone else has entered the room with you is that you see what looks to be like kind of like springing metal hands, like very small, like coming down the stairs, springing, and there's like a like a set of four of them that like start like. <laughs> like almost as if they're walking like all the way down the stairs and then as soon as they get down to the stairs you see them like kind of fold in and like down as if like something is sitting down and then you see wheels and the like arms like kind of fold back up and then you hear the sound of the wheels uh just going along the along the stone and as you are watching this uh, these wheels kind of roll up. Um, 
Dakota from what you can see between like you've been in the confessional booth, right? No. Okay. So it is like it is very hard to see out of because they're made so you can't look into them. But there typically is like um it's it's like a, like a mesh almost, right? Exactly. Uh and it's a very like thick mesh of like almost wicker in this one. So you can kind of see but not a not like a lot, but it seems like there's a figure uh and it from your perspective, the way that figure looked as if it was like almost like a daddy long leg of like mm, like, like yep. thing here and like two like legs and you saw it like sit down and like the legs fold in and it rolls it rolls and rolls and eventually walter it gets to a point where you see that they are coming up towards the altar and then you're like oh wait i know what this thing is this is a wheelchair and it's aaron jesus christ <laughs> that was the worst way this could have been described and you see that they are going alongside of the altar kind of uh and and there's like almost like some steps that go up uh like kind of around the altar in a way where um the base of the steps are built at the base of the stand for the altar and then build up uh and around it um so that the at the height of the altar, it is higher up than on the ground floor. And when they get to that, uh, you see just the hands grow out again. Like they walk up the thing and awesome. it goes right back in. Yeah, that's what you 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 can see clear as day that Aaron seems to be like looking around, um, trying to get a sense of stuff. I think they take one of they take one of the candles off of uh, one of the other uh, candlesticks and. Uh, like fish a lighter out of a pocket, uh, light it and then like stick it onto like the side of their wheelchair and are continuing to look around. Dakota, you can now see that someone has lit in a match or lit in a candle. Can I tell that it's Aaron or no? I think you can hear the sound of wheels on stone. And I think you see it do the arm thing again, but I don't know if you have, you might be able to guess because they were the lat, like they're the only person that you've seen in a wheelchair since being here, but that doesn't mean it can't be someone else. Could Walter um, feasibly get over to where the uh, confession booth is without being seen? Seems like you're trying to skidoo. Oh, that's a very bad role for me. I, I mean, uh, uh, it's a very bad role for me. Understood. But it seems like yeah. you're trying to yeah, get see, past does him seem in a like danger, that's what doesn't I'm it? To, it does yeah. seem like that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, doesn't it? Does. It? it does. Uh -huh. So I'm going to need your role plus steam for me. Okay. Uh, Marcy, you got me? Yeah, I got you, friend. Do you have skidoo, first of all? Nope. So minus two. Uh, What's your steam? Minus one. So minus three to this roll. Awesome. You sure you want me to do this one? I think it's going to be interesting. So yeah. What'd you roll? So Kedrick, what happens? What happens when Aaron sees Gus? What did, uh, <laughs> what, what did you roll? I rolled a seven. <sighs> Tragic. So uh -huh. seven minus yeah. three. That's an experience point. Um, that's that's less than what I needed. Yeah. I thought you were gonna like tell us you'd rolled like a three <laughs> or like a two. Um, it was it was, it was so close to being good. Um, mm. And then we'll see. The thing is, I had to roll at least a ten. Yeah. Yeah. I had to roll. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, Why did I make this roll? Because you wanted to get over to the confessional. Um. So you start going, you start like trying to like skip your, your plan immediately that comes to your head is like, oh, I'll just skitter across after like the lights out of the way. I should be fine. Um, you do that. And as you do, you end up tripping over one of the wires that you can't see. Uh, yeah, and uh, you just a light, like uh, just a light flop. And <laughs> that's really cute, actually. It is a little cute. It is just as uh, Aaron is like turning, turns to see you and uh, they immediately, their eyes like narrow and they like wheel around to turn towards you and like away from the altar. They like, they, they kind of wheeze out. You're still here. Ah, uh, 
Yeah. Hi. What have you found? This Hold on. room. Hold on. Give me one second. I don't know if I can keep doing this voice just because I don't know if it will be very listenable. Um, so I'm going to make the note now, listener, that imagine that their voice is in that voice that I've just been doing. Um, but I'm going to talk regularly just so that it's easier for you to understand what I'm saying. Okay. Wow. So thoughtful of me. Uh, yeah, no. Walter says, ah, this room. Yeah, this altar, these candles, all this weird stuff that doesn't seem like it should be here. What about you? They kind of look you over in a way, like where you can tell that they're still not sure if they can trust you. And uh, they go, almost what I need. Eh, What do you need? I'm not telling you shit. You're with that harbinger. Dakota uses their voice and almost to the point where it's not coming from any specific point in the room. Mm -hmm. Um, And it fills the room. And uh, he goes, Oh, that's not a way to talk to guests now, is it? Are you pretending to be the stranger? Mm Mm-hmm. Can you roll me a grift? Fuck. I don't even have that. Oh, no. So minus two plus much. Okay. Fuck. That's a seven, though. Okay, they'll consider it for a price. They'll consider buying your ruse. Okay. I think that this doesn't... It's not so... Okay, I I, I think I know how to play this. They go... They kind of... Wait, 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 hold on. Before you get into this, can I ask one question? Yeah, for sure. Aaron, Aaron isn't, like, a person of color, right? I think it would be very hard to tell. Okay. If they are. I, I was anxious and worried if like if I was pretending to be the stranger and I used the term boy, I was worried that that would like have implications. Unders- understood. Understood. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, we're fine on that front. No, you're good. Okay. Sorry. No, you're fine. Um, what would it take for them to buy it? I think the price for this is going to be you need to show some show of power outside of the voice to to not just this is I think they've bought into it. I think that's the thing they bought into it, but they are not they have no reason to listen or like, you know, be friendly towards you or like, you know, be intimidated by you. Um mm-hmm. Unless you have a display of power. And I think the way that this manifests is that immediately they uh, like hold on to their to their wheelchair in a way where like the arms come out of the wheelchair and mm-hmm. like stand up and it's like uh, they get into like weird like com- like combat spider mode <laughs> um, and they they call out to you as the stranger and say so they were working for you oh please who doesn't work for me nowadays fair enough i guess if you're gonna do something about me being down here, do it. Oh, but that takes away. And then it gets like right up behind uh, Aaron's ears and goes, "All the fun of it." I think one of the arms, uh, one of the back arms, quickly like gets up, like clasps the fingers together, almost spear-like, and like, like tries to attack like the area where the voice is coming from. But of course, there was nothing there quickly again like moves around uh turns out mm-hmm. walter you're watching uh them kind of get confused in this way do you do anything as this happens i think no okay you just stand there and watch yeah okay cool you do yeah i have a question for you mm-hmm. kendo seeing as though i have this new weapon that happens to be plant-based and plant-themed and appears to penetrate all uh-huh. the fences Is there a way I could stab the floor in the confessional and have a a um, a a bushel or whatever of the of the roots the stranger uses grow across the floor and start to entangle um, Aaron? 
can, can I just can I just say I look I don't know why this was my first thought, but I thought you were gonna say since I have this uh like plant sword, would it be super effective against uh Aaron who's maybe a water type? Um, <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I That's should've good. went that route, my man. Um, yeah, I will give you two choices here. I will let this be a cause mischief rule, or I will let it be a hurt rule. Uh, but the implications of either being that. I have wrath, so I should use a hurt okay. roll. Cool. Um, when all else fails, you can hit something. <clears throat> Describe how you attack. Roll plus steam. Uh, and I will say using this sword will give you a plus one. Got you. Um, and there, and there, like, is it? Is it will it be apparent that like this is coming from the confessional or will it kind of be like a bit more if you don't if you don't want it to it won't cool awesome depending on depending on what you roll here that's also a plus four by the way it's in your favor holy shit that's a fucking 16 baby that's a pretty large number very nice i think that's easily the largest number yeah for sure describe what this looks like yeah um dakota like sitting in the confessional takes the takes this the the newly found like thorn sword and brings it from their their belt and stabs it into the ground of the confessional um sort of like plunging it as deep as they can and uh, underneath aaron the the same roots the stranger uses start to grow and like tangle and get themselves stuck and interlaced inside the wheels of their wheelchair um and starts to grab at the hands of the wheelchair and the arms and starts to kind of um flourish more and more trying to overtake them awesome so you do the whole stab and thing you can feel this immense power that you have that's like kind of flowing through the sword like stab into the ground and you feel as the roots like go like into the ground and you feel them almost entangle with some other kind of root structure that is very close um and that's almost kind of feels what like this is why this is so powerful you happen to have done this in a place where there is a similar root system that is more than willing to entangle with you and do this stuff and so when it comes bursting out of the ground uh they try to stab like they try to move and stab at it with one of the like kind of spear arms and um the root is just like too thick and it like gets like stuck in it uh and then it goes to like wrap around them and like pulls them out of the chair and like slams them onto the altar and you see like, and like walter you can see as the roots like wrap around them and like like constrict them to the altar and after it does so walter you recognize because you've just tripped on them that the spaces you were seeing line up exactly with how the vines and like and roots and stuff have pulled on where like the space where something looked like it was on the altar that is where they are and the like (sighs) ways in which like the vines and like roots have like tied them on line up exactly with where those wires and cables along the ground seem to have been and you see as uh, Aaron is like like trying to like roll and like struggle uh, out of the roots, but they're having a really hard time doing so. And they're like grunting and wheezing uh, in pain and frustration. Oh, well, I just do not know how the fuck to process that. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I think Walter yells. Yeah, I think I, th- I think he, I, he, he yells like directed at, at Dakota. That's enough. That's enough stop um dakota slightly pulls the sword just a little bit out of the ground trying to alleviate some of the pressure that is on aaron it does not because it is no longer just your roots yeah yeah all right cool cool Ah, okay um i think it loosens a bit because a I little. think 
Yeah, because I think your roots loosen, but okay. the other roots do not. Okay. Um, um, using the voice again. Um, oh, I ain't gonna do nothing rash. But I'm just curious why a little friend is down here. Uh, they like kind of struggle and respond. I have nothing to say to you. Neither kill me or, or change me into a a turtle or, 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 or finish this transformation or whatever you want. But I'm not going to tell you nothing. Walter gets close to them uh, and he just says, I want you to listen to me very closely, okay? I don't know if I'm going to be able to get you out of here, but I am going to take the stranger down. If you know anything and help me, I need to know. What is this place? What's going on here? Kind of want to have you make a be a friend role here because that feels like the oh, thing shit. that that feels like the thing that's the most applicable but it is a little kid move can you it's, do that technically yeah, no that, that is mean, your it's game. not my game it's adam voss's game um but uh, i mean well, well i mean i mean walter does have recite poetry i don't know if that applies oh, here oh shit <laughs> Um, we haven't done some poems in a while. We haven't done some poems. I mean, it's at least yeah. something. Um, Because this doesn't feel like a grift. This is you telling yeah. them the truth. Yeah, I'll have you do the be a friend move, but rather than minus two, you <clears throat> will have disadvantage. So okay. roll 3d6, oh, take the lowest two. All right. Oh, I, you want this one, Kendo? Oh, I can. I can do the third dice. Oh, okay. Wait, we should all. All three of us should roll oh, yeah. one dice. Each of you roll one d six. Guess, <laughs> guess you want blue or pink, my friend? Uh, I want pink. I got okay. pink as well. Excellent. Oh, okay. I've got a pink one with stars in it, so we'll Good. we'll go with those. There you go. I got a one. I got a one. I got four. <laughs> so that's two ones. Sorry, Gus. Which wow. much? It's uh, it's not a plus five, so we're gonna go ahead and say <laughs> I failed this roll. Understood, understood. Uh, experience. Yeah. Um, Rip. Grinding, they... grinding the levels this session. <laughs> yeah. They spit in your face. Oh. And because of their size and your size, it's like a big loogie, and you're like sticky and dripping. Ew. Cool. <sighs> and. Uh, as you're like kind of like <laughs> figuring that out, all of you hear a voice. Well, well, well. <laughs> Very well done. You all caught them right where I wanted them. Very good, Dakota. And it's the voice of the stranger emanating throughout this little chapel area. You see here, our little spy. <laughs> think they could come on down here all the way out from the wildlands all the way out from the border cities to come down here and see if they could find a way to turn themselves back cowards every last one of you too afraid to just do what needs to be done too afraid to follow rules too full of passion and chaos and disorder. Y'all will leave nothing but a ruin of yourselves, that I can guarantee you. But in the meantime, I think our friend here might have some information for us. And don't worry, I don't need no, <laughs> there's no interrogation here. We'll just get it straight from the source. And you see the roots uh, that are like surrounding them grow off like branch roots that like dig deep into their skin, piercing the like leathery dolphin skin that they have. And they scream out in agony. And Walter, you're close enough to see as like the roots like branch off like veins under their skin, digging deep, writhing and like pulsing in the way where like the branches are like seem like they're pull like almost like if like flu we're going through them out of them and down into the root system and it, it looks so incredibly painful and dakota you can definitely hear the screams of agony coming from in, from outside of the confessional that you're still in um i have a question for you kendo mm -hmm. is my quest complete 
I think the answer to that is yes. <sighs> and so inside of the confessional, your body shrinks, your voice raises, and you find yourself in your original body. The sword also returns to its broken break kind of look. Dakota, like hearing the screams and feeling the transformation happen is like in the confessional, like grabbing at their clothes, their hair, like, no, 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 please, no. Um, and kind of um, cowers in there for a moment. Okay. LGBTQIA Actual Play Podcast Network.